Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Cabinet of Curiosities on Our Own Devices. I'm Jean Messier, and today we're going to be looking at a very simple, yet very elegant, effective, and ultimately very successful piece of design. This is a Primus 71 backpacking stove. And this is part of a very large family of similar devices, generally known as Primus stoves, which were developed at the end of the 19th century to run on the then relatively brand new fuel known as kerosene or paraffin. Now, kerosene was first commercially produced in 1854 by the Canadian geologist Abraham Gesner, and it caused a revolution in the energy market, quickly supplanting the previous mainstay fuel for lighting and heating, which was whale oil, and causing the collapse of the whaling industry as it then existed. It was also kerosene that made the first major petroleum fortunes, such as that of John D. Rockefeller and Standard Oil, who got rich producing kerosene long before they entered the business of making gasoline, which had to wait for the development of the internal combustion engine and the widespread adoption of automobiles. Now, before the 1890s, there had been stoves designed to run off of kerosene, but these tended to be built very much like oil lamps with a cloth wick. And this led to incomplete combustion. They burned with a very dirty, smoky flame, and they didn't produce a whole lot of heat. Now, this changed in 1892 thanks to a Swedish mechanic named Franz Lindfist who worked for the AB Separator Factory in Stockholm. They produced centrifuges for separating cream from milk. And he based his design for a new type of paraffin stove off of a blowtorch that he used every day on the job. Specifically, something like this. And in his patent, what he did was he moved the burner from a horizontal position to a vertical position and created a couple of modifications to the burner design itself. Now, with his patent in hand, he partnered with a man named Johann Svensson, and together they opened up a factory on the island of Lilla Essingen in Stockholm to produce the stoves, which they named Primus, after the Latin term for first. Now, business was slow at first, but it gradually increased, largely thanks to testimonials from adventurers who swore by the Primus stove's reliability in extreme climates, people like polar explorer Fridhof Nansen and Roald Amundsen, or mountaineers like George Mallory and Andrew Irvine, who disappeared while trying to summit Everest in 1924, and Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, who made the first successful summit of Everest in 1953. And thanks to this, the Primus stove quickly became the gold standard for this type of outdoor gear, and was widely exported and imitated by other companies. Now, the Primus company remained independent until 1962, when it was acquired by rival Swedish firm Optimus, who continued to sell stoves under both the Optimus and the Primus name until the present day, although most of Optimus's offerings today run not on kerosene, but rather gaseous fuels such as butane, propane, or LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. And those that do run on liquid fuel tend to run not on kerosene, but rather naphtha, also known as Coleman fuel or white gas, which is a slightly different formulation of petroleum distillates with additives added, for example, to prevent corrosion in the stoves they're used in. But these stoves tend to run on pretty much the same principles. So the reason why the Primus stove was much more effective and successful than earlier wick-based stove designs was the fact that it pressurized and vaporized the fuel prior to combustion, and also mixed the fuel with a considerable volume of air, promoting much hotter and cleaner combustion without any soot. So if we look at the design of the original Primus stove, the Primus No. 1, released in 1892, We'll see that at the bottom we have a squat brass tank for holding the fuel. This incorporates a little hand pump uh, for pressurizing the fuel prior to lighting the stove. Rising up from this is what's known as the rising tube, which contains a little cloth wick to wick fuel up to the burner. And at the top we have the actual burner. Now, when the fuel enters the burner, it actually circulates through, sort of like the regenerative cooling on a rocket engine. And in so doing, it absorbs heat produced by the combustion of the fuel 
from the burner, thus pressurizing itself and vaporizing itself. And when it emerges, it hits a plate, causing it to become turbulent and mix with a large volume of air and thus burn cleaner. And then the heat produced by this then vaporizes the fuel coming in afterwards and so on and so forth. And in order to preheat the burner to promote this vaporization, there's a little chamber, a little cup at the base of the rising tube. This is known as a spirit cup. And the idea is you would carry a separate bottle of high proof spirits, uh, alcohol, ethanol, and you would pour that in, light it, and that flame would heat up the burner. And then you would open up the valve and the pressurized fuel would flow through, vaporize and light the stove. And this could be done at almost any temperature, even down to something like minus 50 in the Antarctic. So the Primus 71 stove that we're looking at today differs slightly from the traditional Primus stove. It's a little bit more compact for backpacking use. It's a little bit simpler in some of its features, and it has a bit of a different manufacturing history. Uh, this style of stove was originally produced by a company founded by Carl Nyberg of Sundiberg, Sweden, which produced, appropriately enough, blowtorches. Uh, they were acquired in 1922 by Max Severt, and in 1953 introduced what was known as the Zvea 123 stove, which was largely identical to what we see here, but with a couple of small differences. And these were considered to be the very first truly compact backpacking stoves, and they proved extremely popular to the point that they were just widely copied. A bunch of different companies made very similar designs, and they're all functionally identical except for a couple of dimensions and little features. So the Svea 123 is functionally identical to the Primus 71, the Optimus 80, and the Jewel 33 and 34, among others. So how this differs from the original Primus stove is mainly that it doesn't have a little priming pump because it's considered to be so compact that it is self-priming. So instead, you just have a spirit cup right here, which you're supposed to fill with uh, high-proof alcohol. You can also use your regular camping fuel, and that will preheat the burner. Also, the burner is a lot simpler than the Primus burner rather than that recirculating design, this simply has a vertical nozzle that causes the fuel as it emerges to impinge on this top plate. And that causes the fuel to spread out, become turbulent and mix with air, and the flame emerges out through the gaps in the top of this plate. And then the other design feature that it has is this valve right here. Uh, that's to control the fuel flow, and that's controlled by this little key, which is normally chained to the stove. You put the key over top and you can open and close the valve. And this has an interesting self-cleaning feature. The valve here is actually a needle valve where a little needle goes in and out of an orifice. And the idea is that when you actually close the valve, it pushes any soot that has accumulated in the nozzle out so the thing actually cleans itself as you use it. A very handy feature. Uh, Another interesting feature with this is, unlike the Svea 123, the original design, which has sort of a circular uh, windshield, uh, this comes in a little tin, which acts both as a windshield and as a little pot stand. So you can actually put the stove inside and put your pot on top and cook whatever you want. Now, another interesting feature is that this stove normally is not intended to have a priming pump. As I said, it typically doesn't need one. But for cold climates, for extremely cold conditions, sometimes you need a little bit of extra pressurization. So when I bought this, I bought an optional fuel cap that has a little valve in it that's meant to be used with this little hand pump. So this little hand pump goes over top of the valve and you can pressurize the fuel tank just as you would on a larger Primus stove, but that's not standard equipment. I just decided to buy that just in case. So you're probably wondering what was one of these look like in action and how do you start one? Well, never fear, let me walk you through it. All right, so the first step is to fill the spirit cup. Like I said, you're supposed to use alcohol here, but I've always gotten away with just using regular white gas. Now I'm going to pressurize the fuel tank. Not strictly necessary unless you're starting in really cold weather, but it does make it a little bit easier to light the stove. 
Now we're going to light the spirit cup. And this is going to preheat the burner and vaporize the fuel. And then we turn on the valve using the key and the fuel is going to come out of the nozzle and catch fire. And as the burner becomes hotter and hotter, it's going to vaporize the fuel better and we're going to get that nice blue hot flame. And then the flame in the spirit cup is going to die away and the stove is ready to use. You can hear that distinctive roaring sound, which a lot of fans of this type of stove liken to a jet engine being switched on. And to turn off the stove, simply cut off the gas supply, and out it goes. So despite the fact that the stove is designed to run off of naphthalene or white gas, you can pretty much run it on any flammable liquid you happen to have on hand. In fact, I've run this on something as lean as vodka, which is only 30 to 35% alcohol, but nonetheless can boil a cup of water in no time at all. That's how effective this mechanism is at vaporizing and properly mixing the fuel. Uh, you can also run this off stuff like gasoline, but unfortunately, modern gasoline blends have so many fuel additives in them that it tends to leave really gummy residues that will quickly clog up the valves. So unless you have nothing else available, would not recommend running these on gasoline. But it's that legendary reliability and all sorts of weather conditions and the ability to burn pretty much anything you have on hand that gives these stoves a devoted following to the present day. And a lot of the original production stoves that were made more than half a century ago are still in use today. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I really wanted to have a closer look at this and the whole history of Primus stoves because sometimes you get a design for something that isn't that sophisticated, isn't that complicated, but it's still just a solid design that stands the test of time and is relied upon for decades. And the Primus stove and all of its different imitations and spin-offs and versions certainly qualifies. Anyway, I'll see you next time on another episode of Cabinative Curiosities where we'll look at more interesting devices just like this. Until then, I'm Jean Messier. Have a great day.